Welcome Monday, the 14th of October, and we have a lot of things going on. Of course, we have Christine Lagarde trying to warn. This is amazing. The IMF chairman warning America, and what right does she have to open her mouth about anything about America other than to get trillions of dollars from us to pay for things for the third world when we don't have our own house in order? Uh, and it's amazing that Obama, with his uh, neurolinguistic brogue, where he'll kind of just have that stuttering speech that's very hypnotic, uh, talk like somehow, why don't these Republicans just open the, the checkbook and just keep on writing until we're bankrupt and uh, I'll be out of office and uh, you'll be well on your way to total annihilation. It's just a m- mind-boggling. And of course, they don't control the cost of health care. Uh, it's a miracle. and It's an urban legend if anybody gets to sign up with the so-called exchanges. And even if they do, they're going to find to their great chagrin that the system is flying apart. Even the good parts of medicine, and believe me, there's about a third of it that's good, Two-thirds uh, needs to be revised considerably. And by the way, don't get off the hook, Canada, Britain, Australia, and other socialist countries because you have hangnail medicine at the speed of light that inhibits any new real innovation against cancer, heart disease, or any other problem. So you have expensive systems that keep your countries in permanent debt, which is why Europe is going under because of their systems of uh, what we call non-innovative care, finances, and no real capitalism in any of these countries. Just try to start a new business in countries like Canada and see how far you go with the taxes and all the other regulations. It's only the transnational corporations that do well. And, of course, we're going to have, a, coming up in the next quarter, uh, hour, we hope to have Professor James McCanny. I've talked to him this morning. Uh, he's in a remote location. Hopefully he have a good connection. Chuck Kresmeyer will be back in hour number three today. Coming up tomorrow, we're going to have David John Oates from Australia, a uh, reverse uh, speech specialist, and coming up on Wednesday, a big special with Barry Chomish, really talking about some of the amazing involvement of the Vatican and these other organizations trying to, to, to literally create an abomination. Now, i got a report on the uh, today from Tim Alexander that the Temple Mount Al-Aqsa Mosque was stormed by Israeli troops, and they closed off the gate, allowing people to go into the Al-Aqsa. It's, quote, the third holiest site in Islam, so... It's obvious Israel is just itching to pull the trigger. The problem is that Israel wants us to defend them, but yet they won't integrate their, their offensive or defensive forces with our military. So our military Joint Chiefs of Staff are constantly having conniptions because Israel can pretty well do anything. Ask for uh, billions of dollars of weapons, which we will loan them the money to even buy the weapons, and then they don't have to pay it back. It's just ridiculous. And uh, the situation uh, I see this week, and I agree with the uh, Gerald Salenti, by the way, I get his magazines, which is the Trends Research, and his blog, which is on daily. He's quite quite a, not only humorous, but a character, but he's what I call the Einstein of geopolitical finance, and he calls it straight. He has a button on his on his desk that I saw him play a press the other day that said BS, and I won't say the whole word, but it was quite funny uh, when he did that after a specific statement by people like Christine Lagarde and the other uh, characters, I call the troop of criminals that are involved with our world banking system. And uh, that world banking system, one of the statements today uh, on Jim McCanny's site, which is jmccsci.com, only 69 days to the end of the U.S. Federal Reserve. That's December 24th. Now, I know they say that there's been a charter change. <coughs> that charter meaning it was supposed to end after 100 years this December 24th that they, quote, change the law. The fact is you can't do a charter to change, you can't do a law to change a charter, and they didn't have the authority in the first place, so basically both are illegal, but you cannot change a charter by uh, a kind of a, s- a sneaky law to extend it to make it indefinite. It's not possible. So the Federal Reserve, the reason why they're closing everything down is that the system is flying apart. The Federal Reserve system, and they're going to replace it with something else, which is why they've, there's no need to close government. They really just aggravated the public with the monuments and the parks, which, by the way, get enough money to support themselves. What they've really done is they're now threatening, Obama is, uh, with his very slick uh, approach uh, to frighten the senior citizens and the military and other people that they're not going to get their checks. When, in fact, there's no such thing as going to be defaulting on the 17th. Uh, we'll have plenty of money, as Joel Skousen says, to 2028 until we really fly apart, unless they accelerate the process of devaluing the currency and doing other things. I think Obama wants to declare martial law, wants to be a dictator, and wants to have a bank holiday for at least a week or two where they devalue the currency and have a bond market run. And it's what I call a chokehold on the other world economies of China and elsewhere that think that they're getting big for their britches. Well, this scheme that uh, both parties are involved with, we've got Mr. Ryan, 
on the Republican side who's saying, yeah, you really, we really do need to have austerity fascism. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, we, we really need to have some others. We have Charles in Texas. You had a comment on, uh, on an issue. Go ahead, Charles. Yeah, yeah you, there's a there's big issue of cleaning up Fukushima, and I think he said that there's a, a tor- torsion field. Well, what happens is uh, subatomic particle physics. All, every remember now, all matter really is just energy, and it's, and it's energized in what's called circular or torsional fields. Uh, so when you look at the uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, what where an electron is, or any subatomic particle, you can't actually get an exact statement. You get what's called a cloud effect in mathematics. Uh, what happens is every nuclear uh, isotope that's radioactive that's giving off high energy, say, neutrons, you're getting a neutron beam, like the blue beam that comes out of Fukushima, or gives off high energy electrons, uh, such as the beta particle emissions from strontium-90, or alpha particle emissions that intercalate in your DNA and disrupt cell membranes. All these isotopes could be shattered. Or 90 years ago, Nikola Tesla talked about this using subatomic particle harmonic fields that would literally shatter like a diamond cutter shatters the uh, facets of a diamond in order to cut it along specific uh, points or weakness. So you'd have non-radioactive daughters. Uh, I'm certain that if this technology doesn't exist, it could easily be developed. That um, We know, for example, that the half-life of radioisotopes on the planet changes when the sun's having a coronal mass ejection, so there's a torsional field effect from the sun when you have explosions on the surface of the sun for coronal mass ejections that change the T1 half or the half-life of radioisotopes. So the, the only way to get this cleared up is this kind of technology. You can't filter the Pacific Ocean. By the way, that radioactivity is in every ocean on Earth now. It's not just in the Pacific. It's in the troposphere, and it's now embedding in the population. So you need something that's going to take radioactive isotopes, going to be tuned to specifically those isotopes only, and going to shatter them into non-radioactive daughters. Bioaccumulation in, in, uh, in the biosphere can happen, but unfortunately, we're already seeing signs that the oceans uh, have been for years dying from the toxins we're putting in pollutants and heavy metals from our industry. Um, they'll try to say it's due to, to the acidity of the oceans, which is 300 million years ago. It was this acid. Uh, I believe it's pollution. We have uh, over 200,000 dead zones, some several hundred thousand square kilometers or miles uh, all over the world, including now the largest growing new one is the Gulf of Mexico from the Nimbacondo drilling several years ago that destroyed the loop current. So, uh, yeah, there's no excuse for, for why we're having these things. Uh, our most powerful tool, it says right in the Bible in Genesis, is now they are of one tongue and in one place, and of uh, nothing will be withheld from their imagination. Imagination makes us capable to, build, to be a co-creator, a quote, a little G God. We literally can use that for good or for evil, and we can, with our creativity, create technologies to get rid of radioisotopes, heal the healthcare system, the financial system, but the evil ones like Obama and Christine Lagarde and all the other yes women and men like the new director of the Fed Reserve, they are evil because they will do the bidding of the dark side. We who are alive need to start thinking sovereignly about how we're going to have our own self-protection systems, food systems, alternative healthcare systems, because the current system has to be completely replaced. You're not going to fix Obamacare. You're not going to fix the federal government. Federal government is beyond fixing. Uh, that's the reality. You know, people want to say, "Well, we just need to elect the right politicians." It's just a, it's slowing down how fast you descend before you crash, but it's not going to fix it. What do you think? Well, I, you know, I think you're right. Do you, do you know somebody I could contact about making a torsion field? Uh, we can uh, talk about that perhaps. Uh, uh, after the show or after you know after the show today uh, there are technologies available uh, torsion field imaging and technologies has been very advanced they used it for mapping out all the underground resources in the world which is the main reason why they geoengineered the upper atmosphere that's number one besides uh, tesla plasma field interferometry weapons etc and geoengineering the climate back in a moment Beyond their imagination. <clears throat> Thank you. Welcome back, and we are trying to get Professor James McCanny, and I hope we have some luck either this segment or the next. Uh, Professor James, are you there? 
Okay, we're working on it. Um, what I'm going to do is return to some of the things that are latest on the, uh, some of the major news items, and I'm going to cut, touch on some nutraceuticals. And again, I made some important discoveries over the weekend in my research, which I'm always doing, on the QRMA machine. I strongly recommend if someone has a serious health problem to get a QRMA uh, with the protocols and the way I will analyze the data and tell you what to do with our other energizing devices like Lumen Photon, Somapulse, etc. Uh, you're going to be able to determine exactly which nutraceuticals and even how fast they're going to be able to start changing your parameters. Uh, this is the way to go. And then you, if you want to do advanced testing, I'll tell you what tests to do. You can use a lab called Direct Test, D I R E C T Test.com. I can tell you what tests to do. You can order them online. You get a cut price. You can have the results sent directly to you and you can forward them to me. I'll analyze them. And I, by the way, all my consults for those who purchase a QRMA are free. Uh, I got completely swamped. It was just it got so crazy. I wasn't able to do hardly anything else. So I want people to understand that this is the way to go. Professor McCanny, you're here, and there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, you've been in a remote location, which we won't give, but I want you to tell us what's happening now. And you've been doing a lot of predicting, which has been turning out smack on every time in terms of a Mars going comet, and now soon Mercury is going to go comet. And we've had another M class CME that occurred on the 13th. Uh, these all fit in with these uh, these uh, comets that are apparently diving into the sun. And uh, we have the biggie coming up here with ISON. It's not a rock of 24 you know, meters or across, but, you know, three miles across. This is a very large comet. It's, you know, it's, that's only what they call the, the kernel or the center of it. And it's considerably bigger. You've explained the plasma physics of what a comet is in terms of transferring energy between planets and the sun. This is a very dangerous object, and people don't understand when the government sets these kind of dates, obviously they have an agenda, which is, in your words, and I agree totally, a false flag is on its way. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, first, I want to start out, Dr. Bill. Uh, I have some people that help me out, like answering emails and things like that. And so we did a little research on the Internet, and there are over 200 people with with YouTube, uh, all kinds of there's what I'm saying is there's all kinds of nutcase information out there coming out. It's just Looney Tune, uh, and uh, a lot of these people I knew. Some people have been around for a while, but right. uh, it's just unbelievable. Over 200 YouTube videos claiming that Comet Ison is Planet X or Nibiru, or just all kinds of... Well, well let's just dismiss that right off, because it almost yeah. doesn't deserve attention. We we need to dismiss yeah. it. You need to go to your website, jmccsci.com, jmccsci.com. Yeah. So to summarize, what what's happening? Because we're seeing uh, a number, a massive increase in meteors and, and asteroids zip past the planet. We've seen meteor explosions that are like that the husband and wife that died two weeks ago over Ohio where one of the meteors exploded and a fragment caused a host fire and they burned to death. Uh, we're seeing these kind of reports all over the place. We now have these sun diving comets and every time you predicted something like quote Mars going comet you can actually see the green halo around Mars. Uh, we, you predicted that it's going to happen soon and these other comets, one of them that dived, dove into the sun recently caused a big CME on the 13th uh, you know, things are going to start rocking and rolling, and obviously the government plans on whatever disaster level happens, they're going to amplify it for their use because they have other agendas like the end of the Fed Reserve, all this dance with both parties, I call it actors-in-chief, you know, Obama, the Republicans and the Democrats, they're all, so we've got Paul Ryan on one hand saying, yeah, we do need austerity fascism, and Obama saying, no, we don't. And they're all playing this game. It's like two wolves deciding which recipe they're going to use to cook the sheep. And they're going to tell the sheep, don't worry, we're going to figure out a good recipe, but you are for dinner. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and that's what I find very aggravating about this. You know, both the Republican crap and the Democrat parties are both giving us crap. And this is not going to be a nice party. This is going to be a party where the sheep is going to die. That's us. That the government wants more control. That they aren't going to prepare the population for something as simple as the CME that can knock out our power grid and cause social chaos. Uh, they don't prepare. In fact, if you got shut down in parts of the government that could stop the danger of an airborne plague uh, from the Hajj, the beta coronavirus. So everything the government does, I say they have the anti-Midas touch. It turns to human fecal matter. 
it's just really irritating to, to for when I talk to people and they want to put their trust in government, I just want to get nauseated. I just I don't want to hear it anymore that these people don't want to hear the truth. I, I call it vicious ignorance on their part. Yeah. Well, uh, the situation with Comet Ison, and yes, these comets are coming in from the south. This has been going on for over 150 years, and possibly longer. Um, right. The officialdom calls them Kreitz comets. It's a German name for a guy the who Kreitz. studied. Yeah. Sun yeah, diving comets, or Kreitz comets, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's just a name. What's going on is there's these comets have come in from the south regularly and, uh, since the satellite like SOHO has been up. We've seen them. They consistently cause solar flaring. And uh, as hard as they want to try, officialdom is denying this. The other one, uh, we've had three in the last couple of days, and they all create solar flaring, uh, right. all of them. And uh, some of them, when the comets get very near the sun, some of them, before they even get near the sun, act right. what I call action at a distance. There's like a spark plug sending a charge into the sun and discharging the solar capacitor locally. But Comet Ison right now is uh, holding its own, uh, and it's very green. It's uh, maintaining its green color, which is a fluorescent green due to the electrical charge passing through the comet that started when it got near Mars. And, uh, of course, like you were saying, it caused the, uh, it developed a sunward spike when it was near Mars. And it's odd that all of the photos that are being posted, which are very few and from amateurs, are very out of focus. They want to they wanna make sure nobody sees that sunward spike, which is still exhibited uh, on Comet Ison. So it's a fairly, it's what we would call a healthy, it's a small comet as comets go. It's not a major comet. It never deserved Comet of the Century status that NASA gave it. I don't know where yeah. in the world they dug that up. That, that's an exaggeration. Uh, and you think whenever you see these exaggerations and you also see them shutting down certain parts of the, the transfer of data, you have to wonder that the ghost behind the machine is going to do something that this is building up toward a false flag, isn't it? Because yeah. it doesn't make sense. You know, yeah. It doesn't make sense that you hear the DHS director mentioning before she's leaving office there's a 100% chance of a CME, and the very dates where they're going to do the power grid test, which is dangerous to the power grid itself and nuclear reactors, is the dates when, as you said, there's going to be a direct alignment with Mercury, and when you align with a planet, you can have a spike of energy transfer to the sun that can cause a major CME. So where do they pick these dates out of? Well, they're smack on the exact dates when it's going to cross the pathway of Mar Mercury before it sun dives. So there's something yep. going on here that I find very, very suspicious just like 9-11, we know it was a nuclear demolition of the World Trade Center with not thermate or super thermate, but RDX explosives in the outside joist. This is like a demolition of the world economy. And while they keep us all busy with both parties and all the stuff about ISON, they're telling us, don't worry, you're going to lose power because the power grid's going with a comet. Sounds very suspicious, doesn't it? Back in just a moment with more with Professor James McCandy. Your questions are welcome. 800 259 It's in Jakob Frank just a few hundred years ago. What a glorious time to be free. What a beautiful world. Welcome back. So, Professor McCandy, I want you to summarize what you think is going to happen because when I started putting you know, the forest and the trees together, we know comets are dangerous. There have always been harbingers of death and destruction. We know, as you mentioned just before the break, that they use comets and numerology, ley lines, and all these astronomical, I would call astral mathematical symbology, because they're all devil worshippers, uh, and they're worshipping to their astral gods, which are Satan and his fallen ones. And they're doing this because this goes back before the prehistory, before any public religions that we can even identify. Long before Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, these ancient belief systems were embedded in uh, our culture because they've been here forever. And uh, people don't understand, even the modern feast days, the day of Christmas, for example, you know, we know that Jesus' birthday was probably uh, Yom Teruah, the first of the Jewish calendar, New Year, which is around September. In fact, his actual birthday, if you actually go back and calculate it, was 3 AD, uh, sorry, 3 BC, on September 11th. Isn't that interesting? That's the most accurate calculation I've seen so far. September 11th, 
3 BC. Mm. And uh, when you look at the day of Easter, Ishtar, of course, it's a pagan sacrifice day. When you look at all these things, and so that's why they often do things on specific dates, like 9-11, you know, 3-11, all these different dates. They do them for yeah. numerological or right. uh, ley line things because of, you know, astral energetics. Even these ancient uh, sites all over the world were laid out in a grid, they call it. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I believe, and, and even the hundred years of the Fed Reserve, they want to transition the Fed Reserve to a world currency system that's biometric, otherwise in the Bible known as the mark of the beast. And even if you aren't a Christian, you have to look and say, do you look at the latest security protocols for Google? I mean, NSA, everything is controlled by the matrix society. I mean, in every country now, whether you're Uganda or India, they're all moving to totalitarian states where this nation state is basically defunct and it's spread, I call the skins of the dead nation states are spread over a titanium alloyed superstructure of corporate Earth Inc. run directly under these dark masters of evil. And yeah. what do you call just oh. the bankers alone? I mean, the, their intentions are they're going to rip the American guts out of the American financial system because the last vestige of, of uh, quote, democracy and a republic and the last vestige of an idea of personal autonomy is going to be gone with Obamacare and uh, you know the spend like maniac uh, attitude and not control yeah. causes because Obama is here to destroy us. Period. Yeah. Well, just to see his entourage of over 500 people, four medical doctors, four four speech writers that he took to the G2 uh, conference uh, just recently. You know, obviously he's living in a totally different world than the rest of us. And uh, so the, the austerity program of the United States is supposedly on because we're out of money. It doesn't right. apply to him, obviously. But, no, no, uh, the point is he, he's, the America's an ATM card to him, but we, yeah. I want to get your, I talked a lot there, but what I want to do is get your analysis of, with your brilliant mind, of what you see them integrating the manipulation of science. Like these 200 people, most of them are just basically delusional. Just like I recently got a, a series of emails about this Dr. Bill Weld and some kind of nano machine that's in the water and this is how they're going to make us have a flu-like illness and I have to tell you having looked at what this guy said and listened to his voice and my wife has got a, a supernatural gift basically to discern voices this is total crap okay it's not oh, yeah. true there's a, there's a lot crap. of mind there's a lot of mind control going on today right and, yeah. and I can tell you that this guy is a total fraud and all these people that are keeping I get tons of stuff sent to me 99.9% .9 of it, including those people who are even you know, on other programs, on this or other networks, is garbage. And But there's yeah. real dangers, real dangers that they're not approaching, like Fukushima, like major earthquakes and volcanoes, like Cumbra Viejo, like a CME that could be Earth-directed. But we're not doing anything to even harden the grid or have all, you know redundant systems for our, our satellite communications or anything, because our economy is based on the Internet. If the Internet goes down, even if we maintain power, we're in a, lot, a world of hurt. And I don't think people understand that, that it, you do not need a surveillance society to have a proper economy, but the global freakouts, they're, con, they're, dis, they're terrified now that CERN d generated the Internet, and now it gives people basically democracy. That anybody can get access to literally virtually any information, and if you've got two clues to figure out what's going on, you can completely ignore the media and figure out at least a portion of it. Now, if you listen to programs like this, we pre-filter it like a good water filter, so you won't get what we call it, the nano machines that'll eat up your brain and tell you you're going to die. <laughs> so, That's the whole Professor point McKinney, of a lot of this, <clears throat> yeah, Bill, a lot of this misinformation is because. They just flood the airwaves with garbage, and that's the point. Because people, I saw a comment from a guy on a blog the other day, and he goes, he goes there's so much information here, I can't tell what's right and wrong, and that's the whole point. Well, the, the point so is they need to... experts like us to actually filter it through the heavy inside contacts, like when I tell about the beta coronavirus. This is really dangerous. H seven N nine is really dangerous. We have a Chinese scientist, and I have a Colorado scientist at the university who's told me this is a genetically engineered super virus. The, the global elite are doing real things that are dangerous. One of the worst ones is they're not fixing the power grid from CMEs, but they're also not dealing with Fukushima Daiichi, which is an incredible environmental catastrophe. And yet everybody, because they can't see radioactivity when they see a sunny day in California or Ohio or Eastern Europe, they think it's fine, and it's not fine. They think it's okay to have toxic chemicals and heavy metals in your food, and they think it's okay. It's not. 
They think it's okay to let the food industry do all kinds of genetic engineering or force vaccinate your kids with a vaccine that gives them DNA. Uh, you know, that could be bug larval DNA or uh, plasmids made from you know, from uh, rabies or, you know, or the HPV vaccine. I see a bank holiday in the near future. It may only be for four or five days, but they're going to they're going to call it and they're going to devalue the currency because it's what I call in 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 wrestling. This is the the ultimate illegal move in wrestling is is a headlock where you compress the carotid artery so you cut off the blood supply to the brain for the rest of the world. The rest of the world is having conniptions already about the danger of maybe defaulting when we won't default for probably. 20 years in terms of paying interest, but it means we're going to slash the budgets to pay seniors entitlement for their social security, which by the way, the government should have any pause on it anyway, uh, checks to our military, which is really devilish, uh, or in their other commitments that they made in the past, when we basically haven't grown the economy, we've done this on purpose so that we could crash America and then suck the whole world into a new financial system where basically the Fed Reserve in its new mutated form will control everybody everywhere. And it'll be yeah, legal even to have cash in your pocket or gold coins. In fact, it says in the Bible, your gold and silver will canker. They want it such that bartering currency of any kind other than biometric currency in their supercomputer will be illegal. That's what I see coming. I see a bank holiday in the very near future, and it'll be the stepwise chop, chop, chop biometric ID next May, which they kicked down since 2009. That's coming to every American worker Next May, people say, oh, no, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. I said, the law's already passed just like the Unaffordable Care Act. It's already passed in 2009 when Obama was in his first term. It's not theoretical. This is just what is going to happen. They just keep the kicking it down because they're afraid of a, quote, violent revolution by the public. Period. Now, this, I, I, I see this <clears throat> next month and a half being critical. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, we were talking, the reason we started all this discussion is off the air during the break, we were talking about numerology and the fact that the, the bankers who are devil worshippers, this whole cult of international bankers who Obama works for, uh, they run, they operate on numerology. Right. Uh, Nancy and, and Ronald Reagan were great. I mean, they, they ran the White House on suits and visits to numerology uh, clinics. Uh, it's very strange, uh, the type of activity that goes on, people don't realize. But with Comet Ison coming in, they also use celestial events. And number one, they use comets as signs. Uh, and I believe they've been watching Comet Ison for possibly years before it was officially announced September 21st, uh, 2012. But exactly. using things that have four pointers in time to create activity that are uh, basically what we're talking about here. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's continue with this discussion. It's really important because people have to understand, yeah, I call it prestidigitation, like magic. Watch my one hand while the trick is being done to you. Well, Professor McKinney, uh, if you have a timeline, I want you to explain that some new information is coming. Uh, we have a segment left. I'd like you to kind of concentrate on that now, as you mentioned on the break, uh, that you want to do. And you want to give us so what you th- you're preparing for more information, uh, because they're literally trying to dispel your theory. And as I mentioned on the break, I think one of the most important things you've done is not just the comet and the plasma universe, which is very important, but you've shown there's literally limitless energy, just like Nikola Tesla said, for everybody on Earth, whether you're in Central America, South America, in fact, those energies are even more available to people in the third world using the technology you've talked about in Nikola Tesla, uh, so that now with all this information from the internet, if you have a population including the third world that has limitless power, you make war obsolete, you make starvation obsolete, you make clean water possible, you make manufacturing possible anywhere without a power grid, you make people empowered. You literally have a completely different world that's not, you know, centric like a global world order, but distributed uh, where each part is interdependent, but able to support itself. And that's really important. So tell us what the timeline means. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thanks for that introduction. The uh, Comet Ison, I'll just give a little bit of an update on that. And by the way, Comet Ison is not Nibiru. It does not have seven planets associated. Oh, yeah, with it. that's, that's ridiculous, isn't it? 
Uh, yeah, but anyway, so. okay, it, right now it's a stable, very energetic little comet. And around the 10th of November, I want everybody to start getting up, look up in the eastern sky, start locating the planet Mercury. Uh, and up above it, you'll see by then Comet Eye Sun should be naked eye visible. Uh, uh, binoculars are always good. But the pre-dawn sky, and you'll start to see Comet Ice on working its way in towards Mercury. And I'm, you know, it, predictions are difficult to make because things can fizzle, but it looks like Comet Ice on is very stable. And we're going to have a very good, solid electrical connection begin in that time frame between Comet Ice on and the planet Mercury. Uh, we did see Comet Mars, or the planet Mars go Comet. Here, it was just the slight glow around the planet. Many, many people saw that. Luckily, uh, they were out there looking because I told them to go look. And I'm expecting, uh, like I said, predictions are difficult to make. Uh, things can be difficult to see because of uh, observational hazards. But in a moonless sky, we will not have any effect of moon uh, uh, on the 10th to the 14th of November. So we'll have a crystal clear, beautiful sky if you have uh, no clouds in your area. Get up and look at Comet Ison as it works its way in behind the planet Mercury. And on the 13th to the 14th, that night, between the 13th and the 14th, we will see, hopefully, the planet Mercury go comet. And this would just explode everything that NASA has been trying to hide for you know, decades and decades. Uh, they're trying desperately to destroy my work. And as you say, the real key here, the real key player is energy. Because right. if you understand that if that comet is electrically connected to the sun, Mercury moves between it and Mercury goes comet, meaning that Mercury will start to look like a comet. It'll develop a tail. We have so many spacecraft that have visited the planet Mercury. There's no water. There's no volatiles on Mercury. It's close to the sun. Anything that's that on that planet has been baked off long ago. So to have that develop a tail is just like, you know, that's going to be the, the frosting on the cake as far as the plasma discharge comet model. Well, but maybe that's the real issue is that the, the powers that be knows that this is the end of an age, an age of what I call false money. The real money of the world is not gold, it's not even the Fed Reserve note, it's not even oil. The real energy of the world, the real currency of the world is energy. Yeah, and when you have limitless absolutely. energy, yeah, and when you have limitless energy, you know, they've hired, they've hidden tier one science, including tokamak fusion reactors, for over fifty years plus. They've hidden more advanced technologies from extracting energy from the from the uh, the world. I mean, in fact, when up in New Jersey, when when Nikola Tesla was doing his research in the Colorado Springs in North Florida, he proved that you could transfer energy without wires, without transmission lines through the earth. The fact is, he said already over 100, almost hundred years ago now. That he could literally pull energy from the plasma, from the, the we call the Higgs field, which is a dark and, and uh, matter and dark energy that literally is there present before even the agglomeration of matter. And of course, that's what the CERN project got the Nobel Prize for recently. That uh, uh, you know, time space, which Einstein proved is embedded in the Higgs field, which is the quantum tunnel wormholes that literally make up the embedding of space time in that. And there's literally limitless energy. There's no shortage of energy. There's so much energy, the entire universe is just energy. And yeah, for, uh, I, I, I give an example a lot of times, Dr. Bill, of a hot dog. You go to the hot dog stand or a ball game and you pay $2 or $4 for a hot dog. And uh, that hot dog should cost you about three cents. Right. The rest of the money is in transportation and in energy. All of the things, the farmer, everything else, but the cost of energy is all augmented so tremendously that the, it's destroying our economy. Everything that you do, just look at all the money that would be available to grow our economy if it wasn't all being sucked into that one industry of oil, coal, and nuclear energy. It's just sucking this planet dry. And so if, if we can show and produce in, in, in the minds of the people, not physically do it yet, but simply produce the cons in people's mind around the world. And if, if they see that comet up there connect to planet Mercury, that is the key to 
six and a half billion people yeah. waking up one morning just on the heels of the new world order trying to bring in their new banking system. And like you say, the new banking system com- currency is not money, it is energy. And right, so let, let, let's key. visualize. Let's say that someone puts together a Tesla machine that can be the size of a cubic foot. And that cubic foot box literally doesn't have to have even solar panels. But, for example, one of the technologies we've talked about, we had it on last Monday's program, was V3 solar. 22 times more efficient than regular solar. It's a spinning solar system based on everything in the universe is spinning systems, right? Uh, torsion fields, etc. cetera. Uh, the V3 solar, one little dome that's two feet across and two feet high can generate a kilowatt of power a day, say, in California. Five, and each one replaces five giant panels and it generates uh, AC power immediately. You don't have to have inverters. Well, that's, that technology is a big leap, so it brings it down to the price of you know cordwood. So it's cheap. It's cheaper than regular gasoline, etc. But what we were talking about is where you literally can take energy from the vacuum. You can literally have an energy device that you could have on every home or every business anywhere, and you don't need to pay for energy. And once that's, that that's happens, it's going to transform the world. It, it, the whole world will be completely different. Will be electric. You, you will have electric cars. It will be easy to get electric into your car because uh, in, in the gas station, the people will be using them for video stands or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, the, the gas station, the nuclear power plant, of which we have hundreds in this country and many around the world, you know, that's, a, that's an industry that has been an absolute disaster. You know, yeah. what are they going to do with all the nuclear waste and the coal industry? I mean, good grief, the environmental negative impact of the coal industry is just beyond belief. Well, uh, I think people so, don't understand the coal does three things. It releases heavy metals in the atmosphere. Uh, even if you use coal gasification, it uses up uh, it uses up oxygen in order to, whenever you burn off, we call non-fossil fuels, I call it abiotic fuels. So at some point, you're going to continue to have some abiotic, but you have to have other forms of energy that are not going to damage the environment, or what I call affect a thing called peak oxygen. There's no such thing as peak oil. That's a foolish thing. We get a livery of oceans of oil. If they burned all the oil just in Venezuela and the, and the tar pits and the oil wells there, they'd drop the oxygen concentration to the planet in, in terra uh, moles of oxygen down to zero. So the fact is we know that we're killing the lungs of the planet, the oceans, we're chopping down the forest, and yet we're salting the oceans with with more heavy metals. And you know, the CO2 is a little higher, but it's mainly we're killing the oceans, and we don't understand that the real currency of the world, the solution is energy. And when this Ison comet passes Mercury just next month, it literally is the start of a new age because of what it means is your theory is correct, Nikola Tesla, who invented the 21st and the 20th centuries, was correct. And we need to move toward a system that's decentralized and sovereign, not controlled by a bunch of control freaks, satanic maniacs. Absolutely. That's the real issue. That's why they want to charter the new world financial order all around this comet and shutting off power, because they, they know that power is the currency of the world. Thank you, Professor McCanny. Updates uh, this week. We want to have you back on, if we can, on Friday again, on the third hour. Major updates anytime in the first hour, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday.